All right, guys, as promised, here is some completely unrelated non-Slipknot comment. And by completely unrelated, I mean that it's just drama about a different band in a different subgenre of music. So, yeah, just kidding, not really. What we're talking about today is old CJ McCreary and his band Immortal Disfigurement. And what's been going on with that today? Now, for those of you that are not chronically online, such as myself, or aren't really invested in the deathcore scene, you may have some questions like, who the f is CJ McCreary? Who are Immortal Disfigurement? And why is their band name so bad? Is this the same CJ that was the vocalist for Thyarda's Murder, who sets himself online and apparently had some problems with his bandmates and got canned during the album release and the album came out without his vocals on it, which is nuts and, enti and an entirely different story. But to answer some of those questions in no particular order, no, that is not the same CJ. Uh, that's an entirely different drama and an entirely different vocalist. Uh, and I'm not gonna get into that here, but who is CJ McCreary? CJ was the original vocalist for Signs of the Swarm. He was on their record, Disfigurement of Existence, um, before he joined the now mega famous band, Lorna Shore. Uh, his vocals are on the album Immortal, which is a record that I, you know, enjoyed a good bit. However, after Immortal came out to, you know, pretty high acclaim, more success than the band had ever gotten to that point, despite grinding it out in the scene for over, like over a decade, I think, he was suddenly and abruptly fired. They just put up this Facebook post, effective immediately, you know, he's out. And everybody was like, oh my God, what happened? And then uh, all this stuff started coming out. Now, the stuff that I'm referring to, allegations of some at best questionable behavior with women, racist attitudes and comments, being an awful bandmate, not being very serious about projects, not showing up when people needed him, and also posting what might be the most egregiously tone-deaf official statement about the allegations video I've ever seen in my entire life. Tragically, that video was taken down apparently uh, in the last few months, so I can't show it here, but you know, here's a shot of it and old CJ and all of his glory. If you need any proof of these allegations, you can go comb through the R Deathcore subreddit where even other band members of deathcore bands are commenting to confirm his behavior. You can listen to episode 33 of the Get Tucked podcast with Lorna Shore's drummer, Austin Archie, who is an absolute machine and does inhuman things on the drums, where he kind of goes into why they fired him, why he was so hard to work with, and, you know, his attitude, you know, all these other problems on top of the allegations about women and the racism stuff. So it was not looking good for CJ when he was tossed and like semi banished from the scene. There were still people that defended him, of course, but you know, he kind of disappeared for a bit until he came out with that official statement video. And then we arrive at Immortal Disfigurement. Now, Immortal Disfigurement is, or was supposed to be, CJ's comeback band. The band name, Immortal Disfigurement, uh, has to be CJ's idea because he was the vocalist on Signs of the Swarm's Disfigurement of Existence record and Lorna Shore's Immortal record. So you get Immortal Disfigurement. Uh, don't feel bad if you didn't notice this right away. I didn't. It took me a little bit of time and I was like, oh, that's why it's called that. You know, and that explanation actually somehow makes the band name even worse. But, you know, we're not going to get stuck on, you know, how awful that band name is. It's a deathcore band name with big scary words and lots of syllables, the usual so, uh, why am I talking about this band, and why am I talking about CJ? Well, Immortal Disfigurement so far released four singles that, you know, a good amount of people enjoyed, so there was a not insignificant amount of hype behind their debut album, which was actually supposed to come out this week. And, oh, sweet baby Jesus, that is not at all what happened. The album did not come out. First of all, instead of releasing the record, a message was posted on the band's official Instagram saying that they were going to delay the release for mixing and mastering reason and that they were going to work hard to give the fans that the album that they wanted to give them and blah, 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 kind of the usual. However, after that statement was posted, the instrumentalist Harry, I don't want to try to butcher your last name, man. I'm sorry. I'm just not going to say it. I'm going to call you Harry. Harry, the guy that they hired is the chief songwriter, posted a lengthy message on his own Instagram saying that effective immediately, which may or may not be a hilarious callback to Lorna Shore's firing message, he was no longer part of the project. Not only was he no longer part of the project, but he was going to be releasing the remaining six songs 
as instrumentals without CJ's vocals on YouTube for free. Additionally, he said that he had received no compensation for his work and that one individual was basically the fault for the album not coming out, him not receiving compensation, him not being involved in band decisions despite writing uh, the music. Uh, and I bet with a little bit of neuronal firing, a little bit of time to think, you can figure out who that one individual is. That's right, it's CJ. CJ's being a piece of shit, apparently, and that's why this album didn't come out. However, that's not the only thing that happened. After Harry jumped ship, the drummer, Leo McLean, posted a message on his Instagram saying that he was leaving the band. Poor Leo, he was uh, the drummer for Worm Shepherd, and he left for reasons that I haven't, you know, investigated enough to feel comfortable covering to join this project, which then flopped. So now he's like over oh, two, poor guy. And you know, if you've watched his YouTube videos, he's clearly very, very talented and he's a young guy. He does stuff like cover infant annihilator on the drums on an electric kit, which is nuts. If you know anything about infant annihilator, the music is basically not performable. It's inhuman, it's programmed. It's supposed to sound like that. But, you know, he was able to play it, which was just absolutely nuts. I was stunned the first time that I saw it. So, uh, now we've lost the songwriter and the drummer. Go ahead and give Harry some support. Check out the instrumentals on his YouTube channel. I'm going to post them in the description of this video. I know that there are some of you who will say, Hey, you guys should have known what you were getting yourself into with CJ. Why did you join a project with a guy who's got all these allegations? A lot of which have been confirmed by multiple people and other high profile bands. But Harry actually went on Reddit and posted a comment addressing this, which I'll put here. I've censored his name because I don't know if he wants a million messages uh, pouring in, but you can go find his comment. Harry here. Honestly, man, I agree with you in regards to, you know, I should have known better. I had to absolutely gaslight myself into thinking it would benefit my career during the beginning stages of working with him. I was a completely nobody songwriter and I had no platform, very few clients. The needed potential boost that it would bring, even despite all the controversy, would allow him to, you know, pursue his dream, feed his family, make some money off of this. It seemed like an opportunity that he didn't want to pass up despite, you know, the massive risk in joining a project with CJ. And I can absolutely respect his response and his honesty in this. It's a big opportunity. CJ is a very high profile vocalist. Uh, he's a pretty good performer. His vocals are crazy. I feel bad for the guy. Um, he's clearly quite talented as a songwriter. And I think had the album had a normal release, you know, a normal media cycle and come out as planned with CJ's vocals, it would have been very well received in the deathcore community, especially with this orchestral and slow breakdown centric sound that seems to be really dominating the genre right now. So I, I wish him and the other instrumentalists uh, aboard this clearly sinking ship uh, the best. It's just a shame these guys didn't notice that there were massive holes in the ship or just chose to ignore them or notice the fact that the ship was swimming in an ocean of liquidy shit created by CJ. So they were just going to drown in it regardless. I'll put Leo's message up here uh, from Instagram so that you guys can check it out real quick. The two remaining members have yet to issue any sort of response. I honestly don't even know if they will. Um, there's already so much drama around CJ. I don't know uh, if it can even do anything with the songs because they belong to Harry. As far as CJ's career in the deathcore scene, I think it is approaching or has arrived at perma-death. I can't think of any sane person that would want to join him in a project at this point. It's just too much of a risk. Regardless of how sick his uh, crazy coffee grinder noises are that he makes over the now completely overused and way too f***ing slow breakdowns that dominate the genre right now since Will Ramos of Lorna Shore became the deathcore Justin Bieber and that sound kind of blew up. Uh, no offense to Will, uh, love you buddy, you're a great vocalist. I kind of hope Immortal Disfigurement's collapse marks the end of this vocalist Olympics thing we got going on with the slow breakdowns and the orchestra stuff because everybody seems to be doing it. There's a lot of copycat songwriting going on about who can make the sickest noises, have the slowest breakdowns, yeah, who can absolutely melt and devour the most PC RAM with virtual instruments, orchestral layers, extra guitar parts, a million vocal layers, and absolutely just overproducing the ever living shit out of the deathcore sound. Don't take this as an attack on Lauren Shore. Josh Schroeder's production is, is pretty different out of the box. I love what he does. So uh, this isn't an attack on them. There's a reason everybody is copying Lorna Shore's sound right now, but I'm kind of hoping we're going to take a, you know, veer a different direction, let Lorna Shore do their thing and stop all these bands coming out with the dumb, 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 
It's just, I just had enough. It's time to focus on town writing, or at least pick a different sound to copycat to death. The, having said that, I am really excited that bands like Lorna Shore and even Sleep Token are blowing up. I love Sleep Token. Unashamedly, I will defend them. Uh, I'm glad that they're blowing up because they're introducing new ears, new generations to heavier music. My gateway band was like Linkin Park. Back in the day, I went, um, my parents, you know, 70s and 80s rock, Iron Maiden, Metallica, Aerosmith, Motley Crue, to Linkin Park, to Slipknot, to Lamb of God, to Deathcore, and then my interest just kind of exploded. Despite what you may believe that I'm stuck on Slipknot forever, because that's the only thing that people watch on this channel. Until now, because we're talking about this shit instead. What these bands exploding does is it gives a platform for other heavy bands to be noticed and get exposure that they otherwise may not have gotten. And that is a net gain for heavy music, period. And believe it or not, it is possible to criticize the sterilization and copycat sound and songwriting that's going on within the genre while simultaneously uplifting these viral bands and introducing new people into heavier music. We want more ears. We want people to listen to this music. We get more bands. We get more exciting things, new sounds. Like I said, it is a net positive. And we don't want people like CJ McCreary in the scene fronting these bands. You see how I tied that up on the end? Got a little rambly. Here we are, back at CJ. So uh, anyway, I hope everybody has a great day. Some of you complained that I was roasting people, you know, maybe a little too much. Tone was a little condescending. I just want to... You know, take a moment to say that um, if I wasn't being a little silly, sarcastic, condescending, I don't know if there would be much entertainment value to this. I know I dig up a lot of stuff, but to me, um, it's not really that hard to go look on Reddit and find comments and read articles and stuff like that. It just takes a little bit of time to notice things that maybe other people aren't noticing. I may sound like an asshole. I'm sorry about that. But again, I don't know if there would be much entertainment value if I just, you know, presented the evidence and didn't talk about what people were saying or why it was bad and or why it was dumb uh, side note i sent harry the songwriter for or sorry former songwriter for immortal disfigurement a message asking if i could do some vocals on his instrumental tracks see what i could do with them uh so i'll let you know uh if he responds to that you know take every shot you can take you know that's it F cj mccreer Take number two. I have to stop this. I need this. I need to stop. All right. Let's pull up our bajillion notes.